Hi guys, it's Daniel here, and today we're going to do 2010 AMC 12A, problem number 15. So let's first read the problem. A coin is altered so that the probability that it lands on heads is less than one half. And when the coin is flipped four times, the probability of an equal number of heads and tails is one sixth. What is the probability that the coin lands on heads? And then we have a bunch of like random square root expressions that usually aren't probabilities. So how in the world might we solve this? Well, we want the probability that the coin lands on heads. So let's just let that probability be p for now. So p is equal to the probability probability head. And I'll denote that by h. So that means the probability of tails would be naturally 1 minus p. Because if it's not tails, or if it's not heads, then it must be tails. So this is the probability of tails. So what do we know about this p? Well, first of all, it says that the probability that it lands on heads is less than 1 half. So p is less than 1 half. And now comes the harder piece of information. When the coin is flipped four times, the probability of an equal number of heads and tails is 1 sixth. So let's try to think about how we interpret this. Let's just say that we already know the probability that it lands on heads and the probability that it lands on tails. And how might we find the probability of an equal number of heads and tails? Well, if we flip the coin four times and there's an equal number of heads and tails, then that means it must be, for example, heads, head, tail, tail. But not only can it be this, it can also be any permutation of this that makes it a different ordering. For example, it might be head, tail, tail, head. So the question is, how many ways are there to order two H's and two T's into different orderings? Well, you might think of this just as, well, if we choose which of these spaces to put the heads, the rest of the spaces must be the tails. So we can just place the heads. And the number of ways to place these heads is out of four spaces, we choose two spaces which is equal to 4 factorial over 2 factorial 2 factorial, which is just equal to 6. So there are 6 total ways. Another way you can think about it is maybe you first order all the letter letters in 24 ways, which is 4 factorial, but then you overcounted some of them. For example, if you switch these two heads, then it's still the same ordering, so you have to divide by 2. But then it's the same thing for here. If we switch these two tails, it's also the same ordering. So we have to divide by 2 again. And this gets us 6 ways as well. So we have 6 ways to order 2 heads and 2 tails. Now we want to find the probability that there's 2 heads and 2 tails. Well, this is simply just 6, which is the number of ways to order the 2 heads and 2 tails, times the probability of a head, which is p times the probability of another head, which is p, times the probability of a tail, which is 1 minus p, times the probability of another tail, which is 1 minus p. And uh, what does this equal? This equals 1 sixth, which is given in the problem. So we can divide both sides by 6 here and get p squared times 1 minus p squared is equal to 1 over 36, and then we can take the square root of both sides to get p times 1 minus p is equal to 1 sixth. Now we can expand p minus, times 1 minus p to get p minus p squared. And then multiplying 6 on both sides and rearranging gives 6p squared minus 6p plus 1. Oops, not sure what's up with that. All right, back. I'm not exactly sure what happened there, but it was some sort of error on the server side of real-time board. But we're back in business, and uh, let's finish this solution. So we get, after reordering, 6p squared minus 6p plus 1 equals 0. And then that implies that, by using the quadratic formula, that p is equal to 6 plus or minus square root of 6 squared minus 4 times 6 times 1 all over 2 times 6, which is 12, 
this equals 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 24 is 12 over 12 and if we take out a 4 out of the root 12 we get 6 plus or minus 2 root 3 over 12 which simplifies as 3 plus or minus root 3 over 12 or over 6 so now what do we do we get that there's two different values of p that might still make this work well here's where we use the fact that p is less than one half see if it's three plus root three over six then since three over six is just equal to one half then three plus root three over six is clearly greater than one half so this is clearly greater if plus so that means we must have that p is equal to 3 minus root 3 over 6 and we look back up to see if it's there and indeed D it has the answer 3 minus root 3 over 6 so we're done. Today we're going to be doing a problem from A me 2010 uh, since the problem is in pretty low quality I will read it out loud for you